In this video, I'm going to be going over how to build a website with WPX hosting step by step from start to finish. I'll be showing you how to access professional pre-made website templates to make creating your website an easy process. I'll also be going over how to edit your website using one of the most popular drag and drop editors, Elementor Page Builder, so you can create a professional looking website with WPX hosting via drag and drop. I'll also be covering how to switch your URL from HTTP to HTTPS in WordPress, how to add an email account in WPX, how to find your name servers, how to create a staging environment, and more. I provide the link to WPX hosting in the description below so you can easily follow along with me in this quick and easy WPX hosting tutorial. WPX hosting is offering two months free on annual plans. The two months are deducted from the total cost of the annual plan cost. You can always pay monthly as well. A little disclosure, the link is an affiliate link, meaning I receive a commission from WPX hosting at no extra cost to you. Let's get started with the WPX tutorial on creating your website with WPX hosting. The first thing you want to do to build a website with WPX hosting is to click the link in the description below so you'll be taken to WPX. You'll be on the WPX hosting page shown here. Click the view plans button. You will not be on the WPX Manage WordPress Hosting Pricing page. You'll see you'll get two months free by choosing WPX's annual plans. You can toggle the plan to pay yearly or monthly. If choosing yearly, two months are free and deducted from the WPX WordPress Hosting Plan's yearly cost. WPX Hosting offers free migrations if you are moving over from another hosting provider. WPX's WordPress experts will move your site and emails within 24 hours completely free. WPX Hosting also offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. You'll see the business, professional, and elite plans. All the plans come with free malware removal, 30-second average support response, free fixes if site offline, free site speed optimization, 30-day money-back guarantee, and 99.95% uptime. The business plan comes with up to five websites, 15 gigabytes of storage, 200 gigabytes of bandwidth, one gigabyte RAM per site, three PHP workers per site, and one CPU core. The professional plan comes with up to 15 websites, 30 gigabytes of storage, 400 gigabytes of bandwidth, one gigabyte of RAM per site, three PHP workers per site, and two CPU cores. The Elite plan comes with up to 35 websites, 60 gigabytes of storage. When it comes to gigabyte bandwidth, there is no limit, but a reasonable use limit will be applied at the discretion of WPX. The plan also comes with one gigabyte RAM per site, three PHP workers per site, and three CPU cores. Click the Buy Now button on the plan you want to select. I'll select the business plan for this tutorial. You'll now be on the Let's Get Started page. If you already have an existing website domain, you can enter it in. Click the Continue button to proceed. If you don't already have a domain, click on the I am launching a new website and you can search for a domain name by typing it in. What's awesome about getting a domain name with WPX Hosting is they offer free domain privacy with their domain name purchases. Once you type in a domain name you want, you can select the domain extension you want to have for your site below under Choose the Extensions. Click the Search button. It'll let you know if it's available or not. Click the Continue button to proceed. Do not be on the Select Your Hosting Location page. You can choose between the USA, UK, and Australia. If you hover over the location, it'll tell you who it is best suited for. Select the one that works for your needs. You'll now be on the Set Up Your Account page. Enter your information in for your WPX hosting account. Over to the right, under the Your Order section, you can click from the drop-down to change the term of your WPX hosting purchase if you need to. Next, scroll down to the Choose Payment Method section. You can pay via an online transfer with PayPal or paying via a bank card. 
select that you have read and agreed to the terms of service, privacy policy, and the refund policy. Click the checkout now button. It'll now pull up the WPX hosting GDPR compliant privacy policy. Scroll down to the bottom and click the accept button. You now get a notification about an unpaid invoice. Click the see all invoices button. It'll now list out the invoice for your hosting account. Click view. It'll pull up the unpaid invoice. From the drop down, you can select credit card or PayPal for your payment. Click the pay now button. Next, enter your payment details. Enter your information. Once done, click the continue button. You'll now be on the welcome to the fastest WordPress hosting page. If you need to migrate your site and want the WPX team to do it, click the link provided under migration. To go to the WPX dashboard, click the dashboard tab in the top menu. If you scroll down where you see migration requests, click this and you can fill out the migration request form so the WPX team can migrate your site. For this tutorial, we're going to build our website. From the WPX dashboard, I'm going to click the Manage button under the WPX Hosting Service listed. If you scroll down, you'll see the server details. You'll see the name servers being listed. If you have your domain name registered with another domain register, this is where you can get your WPX name servers to point your domain name to WPX Hosting. Over on the left hand side menu, you'll see a bunch of options you can select from. If you click email boxes, this is where you can create a new email address ending in your domain name. Click the add an email box button. You can now create a new email account ending in your domain name with WPX hosting. If you click backups, then select your site, it'll list out the current backups of your site. You then have the option to backup your website, restore to a previous backup, download backup, along with deleting a backup. If you click WPX XDN, it'll give you a record information. At the bottom, you can manage the WPX XDN. You can disable or enable it as needed. You can empty the cache if you need to. The WPX XDN is a CDN content delivery network and it's WPX's fast and hand-built content delivery network with over 37 endpoints and is growing around the world. Now let's manage our website and install WordPress on WPX Hosting so we can start creating and building our WordPress website. Click Manage Websites. It'll list out your website. You can create a temporary URL to work on if you'd like to. You can create a staging site by clicking Create Staging. Select the domain name of the site. Click Deploy Staging Instance. You'll see the SSL option is enabled for this website. Now let's install WordPress on your WPX hosting account. Click Manage WP. Click the Install WordPress on Website option. Using Database, leave this selected as is. Put in an admin email address, admin username, and password to be used for your WordPress account. Click the Install WordPress button. It'll begin installing WordPress on WPX Hosting. Once it is done, you'll see a WordPress was successfully installed with your username and password. Click the X button. To log into WordPress, type in your domain name with a slash wp-admin, just like you see here. You now be on the WordPress login page once logged in, you'll be in the WordPress dashboard. Before we start choosing a theme for our website and creating it, we want to change our URL to HTTPS. In the left side menu, you'll see Settings. Hover over this and click General. You'll see WordPress address URL and site address URL. You'll see it has HTTP for both. You just want to change both to HTTPS. Scroll down and click Save Change. It'll now log you out of WordPress. 
just log back in. Now let's go over how to build a website and making edits to it. I'm here in the WordPress dashboard. We want to start by picking out a theme to begin creating a site. To pick out a theme for your site, on the far left you will see tabs. Find the appearance tab and hover over it. Click themes, this is where you can pick out a theme for your site. Next, click add new theme. You'll now see WordPress themes you can choose from. There's thousands of free themes to choose from. Now I want to show you how to access free professionally designed WordPress themes and how to edit them easily with the drag and drop editor. Type in Astra in the search field. Click the install button. Once it is done installing, click the activate button. Once it is done activating the theme, you want to find the plugins tab in the side menu. Click add new. In the search field, type in starter templates. You want to click install on it, then click activate. Hover over the Appearance tab in the side menu. Click on Starter Templates. You will now see how would you like to build your website. I'll select the classic starter templates. Click the Build with Templates button. Choose Elementor for the page builder. It will now showcase a bunch of WordPress themes you can create your site with using drag and drop. You can type in the type of website you want to create to pull up templates based on that. You'll see a bunch of categories you can hover over and select to build your site. If you click a theme, it'll show you what it will look like so you can preview it. Click the X button to go back to the themes page. Now let me walk you through the steps on how to choose your theme and build your site with drag and drop editor Elementor Page Builder. Select the theme you want. I'll choose this one. You can upload a logo if you'd like. You can do this at a later time, so if you don't have one now, no worries. Click the skip and continue button. You now want to choose the colors and font for your site. You can update these at a later time or change them whenever you'd like. Click the continue button. You'll now be on the tell us a little about yourself. You don't have to fill this out if you don't want to. Just make sure under advanced options you have each one selected. Click the submit and build my website button. It'll begin building your website. Once it is done, you'll be on the congratulations page. Click the view your website button. It'll now take you to your website and what it looks like. Before we begin editing, we want to turn on some features in Elementor to make the editing process even easier and improve your site performance. Up at the top, you'll see your site title name. Hover over this and click Dashboard. Find the Elementor tab in the left side menu and hover over it. Click Settings. Click Features. Go to Editor top bar. From the drop down, click Active. Next, scroll down and find the Flexbox container. From the drop down, select Active. Click the Save Changes button. Now let's go over how to make edits to the WordPress theme and how to use the drag and drop editor to create your site. From the WordPress dashboard, hover over your site title name up at the top. Click Visit Site. To make edits to your site, Click the Edit with Elementor tab on the top of the page. It will now bring you to the drag and drop editor where you can create your site quick and easy. To make edits to a part of the page, just click where you want to make edits and start making edits. I can change the text here from Create Your Website to My Demo Business Website. You see you can link the text out to a page if you want. The heading type, if you click style, you can change the alignment of the text. If you click color, you can change the text color. If you click the pencil icon where you see typography, 
Where you see family, from the drop down, you can select the font if you want to change it. Next, let's cover how to change the background image and colors for this top section. If you right click into this top section here, click edit container. Click style. Where you see background type, you can choose for the background to be classic, gradient, a video, or a slideshow where you can begin adding in images to show for the slideshow. I'm gonna keep it on classic. If you wanna add or remove an image, hover over the image showing here. If you click the trash can icon, you can remove the image. If you click into the image, you can now upload an image where it says upload image or choose an image you've already got uploaded into WordPress by selecting media library. I'll select one I've already uploaded. I'll click the select button. The image is now uploaded. Next, click the background overlay section. If you click into color, you can change the color to something you like. Next, where you see opacity, you can drag this over to get the image to look how you want. Next, let's go over editing a button. You'll see the services button here. Click into the button. You'll be able to change the name of the text. You can link the button out to where you'd like it. If you click the settings icon next to the link, you can choose to have the link open in a new tab and make it no follow if you'd like. You can change the alignment of the button, the sizing of the button. Where you see icon, you can select to not have an icon with the button. Where it says upload SVG, you can upload an icon. If you click icon library, you can view icons you can add to the button. You can change the positioning of the icon and more. If you click style, you can then make changes to the font of the button, color of the button. If you click hover, this will be how you make changes to the button once it is hovered over. If you want the additional button here or something anywhere on the page removed, right click on it. Click delete to remove it. If you want this button centered, hover over the button and drag it up like this. Next, let's remove these showing below. I'll right click into it and click delete. I'll do it one more time. They've successfully been deleted. Next, I'll scroll down on the page to this section. If you click the plus icon, it'll bring stuff up over on the left that you can drag into the page. You can select what you want over on the left and drag it in wherever you'd like it. If you right click on an area, you can delete it if you don't want it. By right clicking, you can duplicate something if you need to duplicate it. If you click the plus icon here at the top in the editor, it'll bring you back to the elements you can drag into the page. You can drag something over to somewhere else on the page by selecting it and dragging it over to where you want it. I'll drag a text into the page. If you click to edit the text, you'll be able to make edits to the text like make it bold. You can link out a text to somewhere. If you click the settings icon, you can choose to have the link open in a new tab if you'd like. If you click toolbar toggle, it'll give you more options like changing the alignment of the text, changing the text color. You can undo and redo changes here. If you click style at the top, you can then make more changes to the text. If you click the pencil icon where you see typography, where you see family from the drop down, you can select different fonts for the text. I'll scroll up on the page to this section You'll see the images showing here. To change an image, click the edit container icon in the top left of the image. Click style, hover over the image, and you can click the trash can icon to remove the image. If you click into the image, you can upload a photo or choose one already uploaded in WordPress. I'll choose an image I've already uploaded to WordPress I'll click the select button. 
the image is now showing. If you scroll down to the next section and hover over the section, you can click the plus icon and then click the plus icon showing again to add a new section to the page. You can now choose the structure for the section. I'll select this one for this tutorial. You can drag in something over into the section. If you click the middle icon with the dots, you can then edit that section. If you click the X button, it will completely remove the section from the page. If you click into a section, click the middle icon with the dots. You can drag it up or down to move that section to somewhere else on the page. If you scroll down to the drag widget here section, if you click the starter templates icon, you can click blocks in the menu and then it'll give you lots more page design ideas you can choose from. Up at the top, you can select categories for blocks to show. You can also type what you want in the search bar. I'll select one. I'll click this one and then I'll click the import button to import it to the page. We can now make it our own. If you right click into any section and click edit section, then style, where you see background type, click classic. You can change the color background of that section of the page or add a background image just like shown in the top section. Now I want to cover the contact us form to show you how this works. To do this, let's first save our changes. Where you see the arrow next to publish, click this and from the drop down, Click Save Draft to save our changes. Next, click the eye icon so we can preview our changes. It's going to bring up a preview of our site. Click Contact in the menu. It'll bring up the contact page. To edit this contact form found here, hover over your site title name at the top. Click Dashboard. Next. Click on WP Forms. You'll see the Contact Us form here. Hover over it and click Edit. It's now going to bring up the builder for the Contact Us form. You can hover over an area to delete it or duplicate it. You can click an area and drag it to wherever you'd like it. If you want to add something, you can drag it over from the side. If you click Field Options, you can click on a part of the form and then make changes from the side. You can select to make this part of the form a required or not required part to fill out. If you click Advanced, you can click the part of the form you want to change and you can select between the size of the form field for that area and then change if you want anything to show in the form field where they input their information. Click Save to save changes. When you are done, click the X button. If you click Settings, you'll be in the General section where you can edit things for the form. Spam Protection allows you to toggle on Spam Protection options. Notifications is where you can put in the email the form info should be sent to and the from email address shown to the person who filled out the form. And the confirmations is where you can put in a confirmation message that shows to the person who filled out the form. I'll click the X button. Now I want to go over maps for your website in case you want to have a map for your website. From the contact page, click the edit with Elementor tab. Scroll down to the map shown here at the bottom. Hover over the map and click the pencil icon. Where it says location, you can put in the address of your business. You can toggle zoom to get the map to look how you want. The height will change the height of the map. You now see the notification showing about the Google Maps API key up at the top. Click the create your here link. It'll now take you to this page. Scroll down and click go to credentials page. Click Create Projects, put in the project name. You could just put in your site or business name. 
Put in the address and click create. It'll then give you your API key you can copy and paste into the API key field. Now you want to click the integration settings link, paste the API key here and click save changes. Your map will now show live for your site visitors. Let's get to know the drag and drop editor Elementor better. You'll see publish in the top right. Click this when you want to publish changes made to your site. If you click the arrow, you can save the page as a draft or save the page as a template to then use as a template for another page you create. To view changes you've made to your site, click the eye icon and it'll show you a preview of your site. If you click the desktop icon, it'll show you what your changes look like on desktop devices. The tablet icon will show tablet devices and the mobile icon will show mobile devices. If you hover over the site settings icon and click it, you can change things like the colors of your entire site, fonts used, and more. If you click the Elementor menu icon and click history, and then click revisions, it'll list out all the revisions for your site that it has pre-saved. If you click one, it'll bring your site edits back to how they were at the time of that edit. If you click the Elementor menu icon and click exit to WordPress, then click the WordPress icon in the top left. It'll take you to the WordPress dashboard. If you wanna make edits to a certain page on your site, you can click it in the menu and then click edit with Elementor. To go to the WordPress dashboard, Hover over your site title name and click Dashboard. If you hover over the Pages tab, click Add New to add a new page to your site. If you click All Pages, it'll showcase all the pages on your site. If you hover over the Media tab and click on Library, it'll show you all the images you've uploaded in WordPress. If you click Add New at the top, you can then upload or drag in an image into WordPress. If you hover over Post and click Add New, you can create a new blog post for your site. If you click All Posts, it'll pull up all the posts you have on your site. If you click the Comments tab, you will see all the comments you have on your blog post. You can easily reply, mark it as spam, or trash the comment. If you hover over the Plugins tab and click Add New, you can then search for or browse plugins to add to your site. Any feature or customization you might want on your site, more than likely there is a plugin for that. If you hover over the Appearance tab in the left side menu, click on Menus. This is where you can edit the menu on your site. If you have multiple menus on your site, you'll be able to select them from the Select a Menu to Edit area. Click the select button to select the menu you want to edit. If you don't see anything here, then that means you only have one menu currently on your site. You can add new pages to the menu or drag a page to a different order. If you click the tiny arrow, you can change the name of it or completely delete it from the menu. If you want to create a completely new menu, you can click create a new menu. If you want to have submenu items show in the menu, just add the items to the menu and place it a bit to the right under the menu name you want it to show under. I'll add a few under services. I'll click save menu. I'll now pull up the view of my site and you'll now see the submenu items showing in the menu under services. You'll notice it doesn't show and it's just white Here's what to do when this happens. Up at the top, click the Customize tab. Click Header Builder. Click Transparent Header. Click Design. Where you see Submenu Color, under the Text Link section, click on the first one. You can now change it to a color you'd like. I'll select this one. I'll hover over the menu, and you'll see they are now showing. To change the hover color, click on the second one. 
change the color to what you'd like. Scroll up to the menu and on hover, you'll see the color has changed. Click the publish button to save your changes. Now let me show you how to make edits to the footer area of your site along with editing the header of your site, uploading a logo, favicon, and other customizations. From the WordPress dashboard, if you hover over the Appearance tab in the side menu and click Customize, you'll be on the Customize page. Click the Footer Builder. You can then click an area in the footer area to start making edits to that section over on the left side. If you click the plus icon, you can then add whatever you'd like to the footer area in that section. If you click the design icon, you can then make additional changes for that section in the footer. If you click the social media icons, you can easily edit, add, or remove social media profiles for your business website. If you click design, you can make more changes like the colors, sizing, and more. If you don't want something in the footer of your site, click the X button to remove that area from the footer. If you click the pencil icon here on the left hand side, you can then choose how many columns you want your footer to be. You can then click the plus icon to add sections to that part of the footer. I'm going to click the back arrow twice. If you click into the header area of your site, you can make edits. For example, to edit the button, I'll hover over it and click the button to make changes. You can click the X button where you see button to remove the button from show. In this section, you can move things around to change the look of the menu area to get it how you like it. If you click the pencil icon where you see the logo, it'll pull up where you can remove the current logo, add your own logo. You'll see site title. You can input your site title here. Where you see tagline, you can input the tagline for your site here. If you click the design tab, you can make color changes to the logo. I'm going to click the back arrow twice. If you click site identity, you can then upload a favicon, which is a site icon for your site. I'll click the back button. If you click global, typography is where you can change the fonts used for your site. Colors is where you can change the colors for your site. Buttons is where you can change the button presets and colors used. You now know how to access pre-made professional templates, how to build a website with WPX hosting, and making edits to it using the drag and drop editor, Elementor Page Builder. That is my WPX hosting tutorial going over how to build a website with WPX hosting step by step. If you have any questions, get in touch in the comments as I'm here to help you with anything you need. Give this video a thumbs up and leave us a comment letting us know if the tutorial was helpful or not as the comments help improve our tutorial. Be sure to subscribe to our channel for more WPX hosting tutorial videos.